What's up everybody? So we're back out of the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we got to take this chunk of steel that we forged into a knife shaped object and actually make it look like a knife. So by the end of this episode it's going to be the thing that you saw in the thumbnail. Hopefully it looks cool. I don't know yet because it still looks like this but we've got to get to that point. There's a few steps that we need to do to be able to get to there. We need to do a vinegar soak and get rid of the forge scale. We need to go ahead and grind bevels, do heat treat, do hand sanding, put the actual final finish on it, maker's mark, all that stuff in this episode. So that's what we're going to be working on. Now, we got to start off with the vinegar soak. This is going to be using a 30% vinegar. This is not your normal vinegar that you would get from Walmart. This is a cleaning vinegar that you would get from the like cleaning chemical section in a Lowe's or a Home Depot. That's what we're going to be using. It's a more aggressive vinegar. Just be careful. It's really, really strong. It's got a very strong odor. You want to use it in a well-ventilated area. That stuff is strong enough that it takes the forge scale off of blades. And if you know anything about forge scale, that's some tough stuff. So it just dissolves that. That's what we're going to be using. Now, I got this idea from David Moon over at David Moon Forge. If you haven't watched his channel, go check it out. I'm going to leave a link for his channel in the description and in the comment section. If you like my style of videos, you'll really like his style of videos as well. He has an awesome channel. Guys, let's go ahead, go over to workbench, get this thing put in vinegar, let it soak overnight so that we can go ahead and focus on doing the rest of the steps. Let's get it. So we're just going to take our vinegar solution. I've used this a few times, which is why it's this color. It comes out clear whenever you first start using it, but I've dissolved a lot of forge scale into this vinegar. We're going to take it from this container because the blade will not fit in this. It's, it's too big. And we're going to use this little container here, which was a seasonal <laughs> little thing that I cut the top off of. Like I said, this is really strong. It's already burning my nose as it is, but we're gonna go ahead, soak this in here overnight. Make sure that it covers everywhere where there's forge scale, which is how I have it right now. We're gonna soak it overnight. Basically what I'll do is first thing tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and scrub it down with a brush and remove any forge scale that's able to flake off and then I'll put it back in here for a few more hours but it's about 10 o'clock right now I'll come out here at 8 a.m. and then go ahead clean everything off and then I will mess with it again but leave it in here for about 10 hours and then I'll leave it in there another few hours after that after I scrub it and that should get most of the forge scale off this is real easy right here all you gotta do is soak it love this process and I'm real happy that he gave me this idea because I've used it several times now and uh, we'll go ahead and do that I don't know how much you can see it right here but there are a ton of bubbles coming up from where that blade is in there and this is still this active and it's been doing this for over 10 hours but it just eats away all that forge scale now we can go ahead and clean it off and see how it looks. So that's after all the forge scales coming off. We still got a little bit here and there. But now that we have the bulk of that removed, we could soak it for another couple of hours if I wanted to, but pretty much anywhere where there's forge scale left is going to be area where we're going to be grinding bevels and everything like that. So it won't be necessary to soak it any longer. Plus we're going to do another soak after we get the bevels all done and that'll finish taking off whatever forge scale we have left so I think that we're good here and I think that that's gonna be just fine for the everything else that we need to do so it was about 10 hours of soaking got all that forge scale off definitely worth it instead of having to try and grind it off or something like that that definitely works out 
All right, guys, so now that we have all that forge scale removed, we need to go back in the forge because we need to do a heat treat process. Now, I'm doing the heat treat process before actually grinding anything on here because we already forged in our bevels. The edge is pretty thin. It's thin enough to be able to go ahead and quench it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. And that way, all I gotta do is grind in bevels and clean things up after that. And we'll have to worry about quenching it and risking warping anything after I get the edge nice and thin. So we're gonna quench it now. And then if I need to fix anything later, I can, because I'll have some leeway with the grinding and things like that. Now, when it comes to the actual heat treat process, I get a lot of questions about this. So I'm gonna try and clarify a couple of things real quick. So one step that I've already done on this was an annealing step. A lot of people ask the difference between annealing, normalizing, thermocycling, all that stuff. So I'm gonna explain it real quick. So I already did an annealing step. All that is is after I get done forging, I just bring it up to over 1600 degrees and let it cool in the forge. And you can also do it in vermiculite if you have that medium. That's great. I just use the forge because it's already there and it doesn't cost me any extra money. So I'll let it cool with the forge and that like actual annealing step is what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and soften the steel and it's going to make it to where you can cut it, you can drill through it, do all of that stuff. And it takes a lot of the stress out of the steel. Now, when it comes to the heat treat process, you've got things like normalizing, thermocycling, quenching, things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a normalizing step, which is just bringing it up to 1600 degrees and then letting it cool and still air outside the forge so that it cools at like a medium rate. You don't want a bunch of fans blowing and wind blowing. You don't want it to cool too fast. Just cool it nice and medium, not as slow as the annealing process, but still pretty slow. You're going to let it cool to room temp and then you're gonna go ahead, put it back in the forge for your grain refinement cycles. Now with grain refining, you can do 1550, 1500, 1475, 1450, 1400. You could do a bunch of grain refinement cycles if you want to. I'm gonna do one, which is just bringing it up to just under 1400 degrees, let it cool and still air, and that's all I really need for this piece of steel. And then we can go ahead and quench it. So what we're gonna do there is just bring it up to 1500 to 1525 degrees. The cool thing about 5160 is as a very forgiving heat treat. As long as you get in that zone and then quench it and something like my 120 degree peanut oil, you're going to be good to go. Now the whole point behind heating the peanut oil is it thins the viscosity. So it thins the oil out a little bit and lets it, lets it quench a little bit faster than if it was thicker at room temperature. So you heat it up and then you quench it. On this one, we're only gonna quench just this bottom section of the blade right here. The whole spine, the bolster, the tang, none of that's going in the oil. That's all gonna stay a little bit softer so that I can file it, I can square up shoulders, I can drill a hole for the tang to be able to put a pin in the handle, stuff like that. But that's the actual process. Hopefully that kind of clarifies some of that stuff. So now we just need to jump into this heat treat process and get this thing knocked out so that we can move to the other steps. Let's get it. So I've already went through and filed the whole entire edge with my Nicholson file to get rid of any decarb. And that's skating. So now we're just going to go through 65 HRC file. And it's not biting anywhere so we know that we're at higher than 65 HRC. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the oven for 400 degrees for two hours just to bring that back to about a 61, 62. We'll end up file testing it with my 60 HRC file after the temper to make sure that we didn't drop below 60, but I think we should be good there. So now it's gonna go in the oven. So now that we have the blade tempered, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with our 60 HRC file and just make sure it skates.
than it does. We'll hit it with the 65 and just see what that does. Yeah, that catches just a little bit there. So it's going to be in between 60 and 65 HRC, which is exactly where I want it for this particular knife. So now that we're going to start grinding in our bevels, one thing that I need to clarify is that things like this, like I've got some lines marked on here. See them a little bit on there. Kind of go up through here for where I'm going to do this kind of swedge harpoon, you know, the bevels on top of it. I've got a few lines drawn on there, but I'm never, I'm not going to be bringing the bevels all the way up to this with the belt. So the whole point behind this little area right here is me kind of getting an idea of where I want them to go. But what's going to end up happening is there's still going to be texture in here because again, the bevels are already forged into this. What we're doing is we're going to take all the texture away from this lower part right here on both sides and then whenever we go up in belts and then end with a scotch bright belt all this is going to be blended together there's not going to be a transition from here to like any flat area it's just going to come all the way up to the top and then there will still be texture in this area here there just won't be any texture here but the bevels are forged all the way up to the top so like I said, all we're doing is just thinning the edge down and getting rid of some of the texture here. And it's going to give us a nice blend going up into the texture area. And then you'll see a nice line where the bevels from the little swedge slash harpoon little tip there actually comes down into it. So it'll be cool whenever it's all said and done. But I just wanted to clarify that I'm not trying to grind bevels all the way up to this line here. I'm just trying to make sure that I know where I want it to kind of even out, if that makes any sense. But first things what we got to do is come in here at a pretty steep angle, make sure this edge is nice and centered. And instead of coming across like this, we're going to come like this and we're going to be able to pull across like this and it's going to even out both of our sides on both sides. And then I won't be scribing a center. I'm going to be doing this part by eye. So we'll see how that goes. That's the thickness I'm going to leave it for now on the edge there. And then as I start grinding in on this, it's going to end up thinning that out just a little bit more. And what will end up happening is this will be almost a zero edge when it's all said and done. So it should be good there. It's nice and straight. Now all we got to do continue using this 60 grit belt right here we're, we're not using a 36 we're just using a 60 because we don't want to have to try and get rid of real deep grind lines because we're not going very deep into the bevels here one thing to note is whenever I start grinding in these bevels we're going to end up hanging the belt off the edge about almost a quarter of an inch so there's no hard line in this little plunge line area we don't want that we want it to just transition nice and smooth into this little area here so we're going to hang it over and that's going to give us a nice smooth uh, plunge line without it being super sharp all right so now we're going to go in here and we're just going to start applying more pressure towards the spine and then it's going to bring those bevels up as we go what I'll end up doing, I'm going to grind here, I'll show it to you, and then I'll end up flipping to the other side and put y'all behind the platen, and that way y'all can kind of see the progression as we go.
something to remember if you're going to be doing something like this where you're just trying to get rid of some of the texture in one area but your bevels are already forged in you want to really slowly start applying that pressure towards the spine because if you get really aggressive with it you're going to bring this belt all the way up to the top here because again those bevels are already forged in we're just cleaning up the area here where that cutting edge is going to be okay so just be mindful of that So when it comes to grinding bevels on a knife that has that forged texture, there's a chance that you could end up with different, of course, lines here. So one side could be really flat, one side could have a slight bow in it, so it's gonna make this come up higher faster than this. This could have had, not been perfectly flat, but had a slight concave to it this could have a slight convex to it even though it looks flat to the eye there could be different things to where whenever you start grinding this removes material faster than this in a particular section so you just want to be mindful of that when you start grinding and do it slowly so you can pay attention to where those textures are so that your bevels match up for the most part now on a brute to forge knife it's not ever going to be the perfect uh, transition line on both sides but a lot of the times you're doing pretty good Now what I'm doing on these first few passes is I'm just getting the bevel area even with the cutting edge. So there's a slight second bevel right there. I'm trying to get rid of that because I had ground in at an angle like that to get a straight line. Well the first passes it's bringing your bevels to that cutting edge so you get rid of that little micro bevel that's going down there. You can see that thin line right there. We're trying to get rid of that and then we'll start bringing the bevels up.
So that's where we're gonna leave it with this belt. As you can see, these are higher than this side. I wanted to go through and grind this side before I brought this up the rest of the way, just in case there were a bunch of those, you know, just in case this was convex and this was concaved. You know, I do want it to look similar on each side. So now that I know that this is fine on this side and they were both really flat, I can go ahead and bring this side up just a hair and make them match that. Now I went ahead and scribed a center line down the, the little swedge area. So we're going to go ahead and grind that bevel in. That way we can see how it's going to look. Now of course this is going to taper from here to here. So <laughs> we got to get that bevel ground in and basically taper it ourselves. So typically what would happen on most swedges is you would just grind a 45 all the way to the tip and then whenever you grind in your bevels that's what brings it up to a point your bevels bring it up to here and basically make it go from wide here to narrow here because we would have just ground a swedge the same 45 all the way to the edge but what we're going to do is we're going to create that by grinding it in and making it ourselves because our bevels are already done You'll see what I'm talking about as we do it. So now we're going to go ahead and go from the 60 grit to a 240 grit and then we'll do a 400 grit after that and then a scotch bright finish. should probably explain one of the steps that I'm doing while I'm doing this. I am adding a slight convex to these bevels while I'm going up through these progressions. You can see, if you look, you can see that there's a different sheen than this up here. That's because that blade is slightly curving in toward the edge. And I'm just putting a very subtle very very subtle convex edge on it which just helps with food release so we're gonna do that as we progress up and get rid of a lot of those grinding lines in the same process should also mention how I'm doing the convex that might be beneficial so as I'm coming across I'm putting more pressure towards the cutting edge and then I'll slowly put more pressure towards the spine as we come across. So edge, a little bit on the edge, flat, flat towards the spine. And that's going to give me that nice little convex.
So now we're going to go up to 400 grit and clean this up a little bit more. Something to be mindful of, whenever you start getting up to grits like the 400s and things like that, we're not trying to hog off material. All we're doing is just doing light pressure and letting the belt do its job to blend everything in, get rid of grind lines, things like that. But we're not trying to put a bunch of force into the belt. We're just smoothing everything out, blending everything together, getting it ready for the scotch Brite belt. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the finish on it. We got our maker's mark on here. We've got that belt finish going all the way through a scotch Brite belt. This is gonna be the first time doing this vinegar soak with a belt finish as opposed to hand sanded. So we're gonna see how that goes. Put that in there. This acetone thing pops like that all the time. So we've got that in there. We're going to go ahead and let it soak for about, I'm going to say about two and a half, three hours. And we should be good there. But we're going to soak it and then probably go ahead and hit it with a fine Scotch Brite pad just by hand. We're going to see how that goes. But as of right now, we just need to let this soak for a couple hours and this soaking process is probably going to make this a Wednesday upload but we'll see how that goes so go ahead and let that soak and go from there all right let's go ahead and check this out I did clean it off one time this is the second time cleaning it off this is going to be the final finish on it of course I haven't cleaned it yet but this will be the final finish So basically what we're going to do, we're just going to clean off some of this stuff on here. And then we're going to hit it with some of this CLP and a scotch Bright pad. And that'll be the actual finish. So good there. Bring you over. And then just kind of like a medium fine scotch bright pad. There we go. Now I'll talk a little bit more about this in the outro here in just a second, but I think this is going to look good. Let's go ahead and do this outro. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. I think that that's looking really cool. So I like the harpoon swedge that we have on the front here. One of the things that looks really cool whenever you think about like angles and stuff like that, it goes from broad to narrow on both sides. But when you look at the top of it, it goes from broad to narrow in reverse. 
And if you look at it like this, it mimics this whole front part right up here. So narrow, broad, narrow. So it looks really cool. Something subtle on there. Brought it down to a nice fine edge and that edge is nice and centered in here. Remember, all of this is forged. So everything that's going on right there, where we got everything centered, all that is forged on there. Because if you remember, you know, I didn't, I didn't change anything here. Around both these little sides here where those are, that is all forged area. The only thing that was brought down was just this piece right here going into the edge. So everything that you see right there is all from hammer and anvil. Same thing with all the rounding and everything that's done to the bolster area. All that was forged. The bolster area where it's rounded down into it, all forged. But I think that that turned out real nice. And I think that once I put the handle on it, it's going to look really cool. And it's going to be a nice little chopper. And I'm excited to see how this turns out. Uh, I have got a beautiful piece of material that's going to go on here. Y'all are going to get to see that. And next week's Shop Talk Tuesday, we're going to do uh, more of a simple handle, but still you know still stylized it's not going to be just a, a block of wood on there i'm still going to do my thing i'm just not going to put like a coke bottle shape handle on it but it's going to be beautiful and the piece of wood is awesome i think y'all are really 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 going to like it but that is turning out pretty cool nice texture from the forging nice thin cutting edge bringing it down to almost a zero there Guys, y'all tell me what y'all think about how that turned out. I'm excited to hear about it. Guys, we're going to have Thursday live stream. It's going to be about an hour long live stream. We start at 7 Texas time. Look it up. If you've been a part of it in the past, we've done that each week. And they've been really, really, really awesome. This week, I've got a cool little topic that we're going to talk about. And it's something that I get a lot of questions about. We're going to go over it kind of break that stuff down you cool thing about the live streams is you get to actually talk during the actual live stream ask me questions in the comment section I answer them answer back things like that so make sure you come and participate guys that's the end of this episode give the video a thumbs up you know subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there and I'll catch y'all next time